I'm here to talk about the biggest opportunity in 2023. This opportunity is how you can buy a house this year. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have great credit. But if you click here and listen to this video for the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you how you can purchase your first property. So the word of the year for me is opportunity. I think this year is one of the biggest opportunities to purchase real estate that we've seen since the last crash in 2008. A lot of people are saying the market is going to go down 5%, 10%. Some people are calling for a full out crash. Whatever's going to happen, there's going to be opportunity to purchase a property. This goes for first time home buyers. This goes for wholesalers trying to wholesale properties, get deep discounts on properties and assign those to real estate investors and flippers. Flippers as well. People that want to buy properties, fix them up and resell them for a profit. This is a really opportunity for everyone in the real estate sector to buy properties at a discount, bigger discounts than have ever been available since the last crash in 2008. So the reason for this opportunity is really the interest rates and the change that the Fed is making in the monetary policy. So interest rates, if you have been sleeping under a rock, they have gone up from about low 3%, high 2% range all the way up to the peak was about 7%. So that's a huge jump. And what that did was created opportunity for us. With interest rates going up, it really hurt affordability and all the buyers that were that could afford a, say a $500,000 house, now their affordability is more down in the $300,000 range. So I took a lot of the, the regular buyers out of the market because they just can't afford the payments anymore. Interest rates are not gonna stay at 7% forever. They are gonna fall back down. But in the meantime, what's happening is that home prices are correcting. People, home sellers that could list their property on the market for whatever they wanted and get multiple offers and sell over asking, those days are long gone. It's not gonna happen again for a really long time. So I was lucky enough to sell a property a couple years ago when the prices were really, really high. The last you know, two to three years, it's been a multiple offer situation almost on all sought after properties, especially in the last year or two when interest rates are really, really low and demand was really, really high after COVID. So if you were able to take advantage of that opportunity, great. But if you did not, now this is, this is your opportunity to purchase a property. So for those home buyers, the first time home buyers, this is a great opportunity to finally get your offer accepted. There were so many buyers out there that looked at 50, 60, 70 homes and never purchased a property. They put out that many offers and were rejected every single time by a higher offer or a cash offer, an offer with better terms, quicker closing, whatever it may be, they lost out. And those people got discouraged and got out of the market and said, this is not the right time to buy now. But if those people get off the sidelines and go out there and buy now, your offers will get accepted. That is the biggest change now is that when, when I list a property as a real estate investor, as a flipper, now I am listing a property and it's sitting there for 30, 60, 90 days sometimes. I'm having to do price reductions on my properties when I haven't had to do that in a very, very long time. So sellers like me, investors like me are more willing to give concessions. Concessions are basically the seller giving you money or a credit in escrow to either buy down your interest rate or to just straight cover your closing costs. It's free money. So if someone comes to me with a, say, asking price offer, and they ask for say a $10,000 credit towards a rate buy down or foreclosing costs. I'm accepting that offer right away. That's the market that we're in now. And usually now my asking prices are even below where the last comps were. So if there's a comp that say sold for 350, a lot of times my listing prices now and the way home sellers are gonna sell is by listing their property under the last comp. So you're already getting a discount there. And then on top of that, you're able to negotiate closing cost credits. So that's the biggest shift in the consumer market for people trying to buy a home is that number one, you can get your offer accepted with very little countering back and forth and very little competition. Number two is you are able to get credits for closing costs or for rate buy downs. And three, the sellers are willing to do more repairs for you. Before a seller would say, you know, this property is as is, I have 20 other offers. Why would I give you a new AC unit or give you, uh, you know, repair the roof or whatever it may be? Those repairs are being accepted now and the sellers are either crediting for those repairs, even more on top of those closing cost credits, or they're performing the repairs for you in escrow before you close escrow. Interest rates, again, are not gonna stay this high forever. So at some point they're gonna go back down, which is gonna fuel the real estate market again and fuel appreciations. So for home buyers, I would not be afraid uh, to go purchase that property. I would not be afraid to say, you know, a lot of people now are saying, 
I'm gonna wait for the market to bottom out or I'm gonna wait for the market to crash. Uh, that opportunity is, is here now. You know, this may be the bottom, we don't know. The bottom may be three, six months from now. But what I do know is that home prices are lower than they were six months ago. So anytime between now and the next six to 12 months is a great time to buy. Um, some people are forecasting the worst case scenario in home prices is that which they will crash completely. But I really don't see that happening. Again, I'm not an expert, I'm not an economist, but I do study this stuff every single day. And the reason why that's not gonna happen is just because of simple supply and demand. All prices, all economics, all, all run off of supply and demand. And right now, supply is up. I mean, home, homes are sitting on the market longer, so supply is up and demand is way down because interest rates are, are high. So the home prices are falling. They're gonna fall to a point to where home buyers are comfortable buying or when interest rates come back up again. So waiting for that perfect time to buy the property is really not the right strategy. You will miss that window every single time. If you are sound financially and you can purchase a house now and you've been waiting for your opportunity, now is the time. So that's for the home buyers. Now for the wholesalers, the real estate investors, the flippers, now is a great time to purchase an investment property as well. Home sellers are finally negotiating off of their sales prices. For so long, sellers could ask whatever they wanted for their property and they would get it. So it was really hard for us real estate investors, our, us value add investors to find properties to purchase. Um, I just got a property under contract to flip that was listed on the MLS and I got it under contract for about $120,000 under list price. Now that's crazy if you talk about the last two years, that would never happen. But now those opportunities are available to us and it is still a great time to invest in real estate. There is some caution with that. If you are a flipper and a value add investor, I would always make sure that if you're gonna purchase a flip, have multiple exit strategies in a time like this. Now I'm not saying that it's not a good time to flip, but you have to have some caution there. If interest rates were to peak again, prices are gonna to continue to fall. So what I've been doing is accounting for some depreciation in the market. I look at my ARV and I take five to 10% off that ARV and do my numbers from there. If you do that with your numbers, you're very unlikely to make a mistake and to be stuck with a property at the end of the day. But what I'm saying is to have multiple exit strategies. Now, if that property that you're purchase, purchasing to flip I would try to make sure that if you had to rent that property out, that the rental amount would at least cover your expenses, that you would break even on that as a rental. You have to look at your investments that way in this type of market. But at the same time, you are able to negotiate deep enough discounts to where that does not matter anymore. You can get a deep enough discount to where if the market were to fall 10% between now and the time you actually sell that property, you are still making a very good profit. So those opportunities are out there. And again, for the wholesalers, sellers are finally negotiating off of those prices and you're able to get a good price for a property. And investors, value add investors, flippers, buy and hold investors are still purchasing properties. It's a misnomer that everyone is not buying properties anymore. Flippers are always gonna be buying properties. The experienced guys, the people that have been in the business for a long time, most of them are still buying properties. I got that property on the MLS that I just spoke about, $120,000 under market, uh, under the list price, and I assigned it the very next day to a real estate investor for a $15,000 profit. Within one day, he purchased that property, sight unseen, didn't care, it was a good price to him. He's a very big flipper and very big investor in the Southern California area. You know, $15,000 in a day is, is, is not bad. So the word of the year for me is opportunity, but that opportunity does come with some caution. You have to be careful, diligent with your numbers and make sure you don't make any big mistakes. So at, at the same time, there's a huge opportunity. There also are some big risk to lose money in a market like this because it is a declining market. You're buying into a declining market. But if you negotiate the right price for that property, you really cannot make a mistake, especially if you are you have multiple exit strategies as far as being able to convert that into a long-term rental or short-term rental, mid-term rental, whatever it is. If there is an exit strategy where you can rent that property out and you're gonna cash flow, I would buy every property that you can that fits that criteria. So word of the year is opportunity. Go out there, purchase that house, buy that flip, wholesale that property, and let me know how it goes.